Good morning, everybody. We are here outside the Snow Leopard exhibit, and we did go live just a minute earlier than we usually do because we want to make sure you guys can get as much snow leopard footage as you possibly can. We want you to see these amazing creatures, how cute they are, their spots, and learn so much about them. We want to take all of your questions today. So we'll, as usual, we'll give you guys a few minutes to tune in and to join us. And while we're waiting, let us know that you're here, that you can hear us. Tell us where you're from and we'll give some shout outs as we get started. Jennifer Lynn says, yay, snow leopards are our favorite. Yes, we totally made somebody's day right off the bat. <laughs> That's amazing. Good morning, Carissa. Hi, Noah. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Anne. Glad to see you. Good morning, Jeremy. Drayden and Jordan. Hi, Pat. Hope you guys are all doing well, staying safe. Oh, Chloe, these, these are Chloe's favorites too. We're, we're on a roll this morning, I love it. Good morning, Shirley. Hi, Jeff and Mason in Michigan. Hi, Luke and Logan, thanks for tuning in. Hey, Ashton in Florida. Wow, this is so cool to hear where everybody is from. Good morning, Melanie in Michigan. Hi, Liz and Thomas, Angel and Callie. As we said, we are live here in front of the Snow Leopard exhibit. Hey, Rowan and Lincoln. Hi to the SEAL team, Wesley, Jason, and Jess. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, Liz. Hi, Lisa in Florida, McKinley and Logan in Kansas City. Tina in Toledo, Elise in Wauseon. Good morning, Kat. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Megan. All right. We have the Eubank family joining us and Skylar, age two, says good morning. Hi, Skylar. Hi, Faith in Florida and hey, Emma. Hi, Jameson and Kinley. Thank you, Kathleen. We are trying to move all around the zoo and get everybody's favorites in. Hey, Harmony and Felicity. Good morning, Emma and Logan. Brittany, we miss you guys too but we're glad we can get together like this each morning now. Hey, Charlie in Michigan and Cameron and Logan in White House. Hi, Ulrich. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and get started this morning so that we can get as many questions as possible in. As we said, we are here outside of the Snow Leopard exhibit and we're going to be talking to one of their keepers and she's gonna be able to answer all the questions that you guys have, so get them ready. Before we get started though, we wanna remind you, we are continuing our Meals on the Go next week, and as long as we're closed, we wanna help you out with dinner. So check out ToledoZoo.org. On the homepage, click on Meals on the Go. You can order and pay online, and then you just drive up curbside to the Broadway entrance, and they'll bring it right out to you. Entrees change every week, so check out next week's menu. And our virtual Classrooms are going amazing through our education department. We passed them on our uh, way through the zoo this morning. They were in the prairie talking about pollinators and native plants. They have so many amazing topics. Check them out, toledozoo.org slash virtual. And of course, we are able to sustain ourselves during this time because of your help. And we appreciate it so very, very much if you are able please donate during our live feeds or at toledozoo.org slash donate or through our Facebook fundraiser. We appreciate all of the support. And as we've said before, we'll be here as long as you guys can't be with us. All right, so we've got Margaret here with us this morning and she's gonna tell us about our snow leopards. Yes. Who do we have here? Well, right here we have Baby Babs. Um, her full name is Babochka. That is Russian for butterfly. We actually named her that because, um, well, we have a camera in the birthing den where she was born and we could watch Babs and make sure she was doing okay as she grew. And we were able to watch her nurse. And when she nursed, her ears would flutter back and forth like a, like a butterfly on a Aww. flower, just very delicately and softly. So we thought it appropriate to call her butterfly and um, in a language, um, in a country where they, uh, 
they, they can uh, be present in the wild in Russia. Um, but yes, this is baby, we call her Babs though for short. <laughs> so this is Babs and her mom, Greta. Very nice. And how old is Babs now? Babs is coming up on a year old. She was born um, May 25th of last year. And she's quite a big girl. She's growing quite quickly. Uh, she's got a fantastic appetite and often steals food for mom, but mom is eternally patient and lets her get away with it. So we have a healthy, padded little snow leopard girl. Yes, but that's, she's coming up on a year. That's amazing. Might have to plan something fun for her birthday. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. But and yeah, talk this, to us about mom. Too. So this is Greta. Greta is about six years old. Greta's from Sweden. Um, and um, she, um, this is uh, actually her second litter uh, of, of cubs. Uh, mm -hmm. Babs was a, an only child, so to speak. But um, Greta um, is a fantastic mother. And right now what you're seeing, my guess is that based on where she's looking, she's looking at her, her boyfriend over there, <laughs> Shashir. Yeah. She's kind of uh, pacing back and forth, um, kind of wanting his attention. Mm -hmm. um, so I think uh, her attention is going to be on him rather than us, but um, that's kind of what she's doing. Also, you know, she doesn't typically have live feeds in front of her um, exhibit, so she's probably like, what's going on? And she's um, a protective mom. She's a, exactly, yeah. She's, she's watching her kid. Um, you know, there's people out here, not that she's not used to people, but you know, we're, we're talking up a storm here, so she's probably just being vigilant, but I think a lot of it is uh, to do with uh, the handsome Shashir man over there. And he is a handsome snow leopard. And he knows it, <laughs> and he knows it. He, he's a diva, and uh, we cater to him. But yeah, That's so Shashir over there is about seven. Um, and Shish he came to, to us from Finland, is that right? I am not sure where he came from exactly. I believe, I believe if I remember correctly, yeah, it was Finland. it was a for yes, yeah, so it was a foreign zoo. Yep. Yep. So these guys are pretty well traveled. Yeah. Um, but Shashir over there, handsome as he is, um, is about eighty six pounds. Greta is um, pushing seventy pounds. She's about sixty eight pounds. All right. And little Babs over there is uh, forty eight pounds. All right. So she's she's. Catching up to her mom. Getting up there. Real quick. Yeah, they, they say a high um, weight, like um, for snow leopards, is 150 pounds. That's quite heavy. Yes, that would be a very so big cat. So ours are not. So actually, fun, fun, what she's doing right there. Yeah. It's called a Fleming response. Okay. She's opening her mouth. Uh, cats have a really neat little um, organ on the roof of their mouth. It's called a Jacobson organ. She's uh, pulling in air scent particles and whatnot from uh, the air around her. And um, the air particles hit that organ and it's kind of like she has a nose in her mouth. It kind of is another way for her to sense and pick up smell um, along with her nose, obviously. But yeah, anyway, that's what she's doing. When they smell something they like, um, I, I have perfume on me because uh, we were actually scenting the cat's exhibits. Cats like perfume, scent enrichment. So she might smell the perfume that's kind of wafting toward her. She might smell um, shashir over there, but um, that phlegm and response, that's typical of cats in general. Your domestic cat will do that too, but that's just another way they pull in smell and, and explore their environment. That's awesome, and we are getting a lot of amazing questions, so we're gonna go ahead here and start firing away okay. at you. All right, let's, I'm scrolling back here to make sure we don't miss any, guys. Um, <laughs> Hi, lady. I know, isn't she's just amazing. Oh, she's beautiful. All right. <laughs> yes, Sue, it is very appropriate. It snowed here in Ohio this morning <laughs> too. And I will admit that this was a lucky coincidence because we've had this planned for quite a bit. Um, <laughs> Steven and, I'm sorry, Kenzie and Samuel want to know, is their fur soft and warm? It is extremely soft and warm. Um, we, <laughs> we as keepers don't, we are not allowed to pet our animals because um, they're, they're, they're very dangerous animals. So we have um, protected contact. But I can tell you that the, uh, the science says they're very fluffy. And their coats are super thick because they live in a part of the world that gets extremely, extremely cold. They can see temperatures in the wild of negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Quite chilly. Mm -hmm. So um, that thick coat keeps them nice and toasty. 
And in fact, when we have snowstorms over here, a lot of the other cats will go into their little shelters. Snow leopards will just lie out and let the snow fall on top of them. They love it. They love it. And they're totally adapted for it, but very soft and very thick. And Sophia, age five, wants to know, what's the difference between a snow leopard and a, as she says, a normal leopard? <laughs> um, that's a great question. So leopard is sort of a, a large, broad term for a, a, a kind of a, a group of cats. Um, we have snow leopards, we have amur leopards, we have um, spotted leopards. Um, it's leopards an all-encompassing term, so they actually fall under the category of a leopard. In fact, a panther is actually a leopard that um, has um, a, a special colored coat. We call it melanistic. It's very dark. Um, so a leopard, they are leopards. They just kind of, they're um, a category of leopard, if you will. Very nice. And yeah. Kaylee wants to know, and you started to tell us about this earlier, how big they can get. Yeah. So um, <laughs> we, have, uh, we have obviously uh, leopards living in captivity, so they can always expect their meal at about 430 so they get fed pretty well. Out in the wild, that's gonna be different. It's gonna be hard to catch food. So my guess in the wild is that they'd be a little smaller than ours are here, a little less padding. But like I said, one of the highest recorded weights they've found is 150 pounds, which I think is a very large cat. Very but, um, large. Yeah, yeah, Shashir about 90 pounds, Greta about 70, and Babs about 50. So, you know, it, it's, it just, it ranges. It's, it's, it's quite a broad range. It is. Bennett wants to know how long they can live. Um, so that, that also depends whether it's a captive animal or a wild animal. Um, up into the um, high teens, 20s, um, it, you know, the animal stays healthy. So it can be, it can be a pretty long life. It's, it's about a domestic cat, I'd say, but, you know, they can surprise us. Absolutely. In the wild, probably a little less because, you know, it's, it's hard to be a wild animal. <laughs> and Lynn asks, could you tell us when Babs's birthday is again? That's, yes, I can. It is May 25th. And we will definitely try to do something for her yes. birthday because that would be really fun. Oh, for sure. And Sue, yes, their exhibit is bigger than it seems. Actually, mm -hmm. it's divided here in the front mm -hmm. into two areas, one for Babs and mom Greta and one for dad Shashir but they also have some off exhibit um, areas that we can't see from the public view can you tell us a little bit about that right and also the exhibit is a tall exhibit and yes. they do often take advantage of that height um, but yes uh, the uh, indoor holding it's a nice uh, well <laughs> It's climate control. They have air conditioning in there and they have um, a heat in there. They don't often need the heat. You know, if it gets too hot in there, they come back out. But um, it's a nice little area where they get most of their meals. Um, and it's where they sleep. It's actually where Babs was born in a safe little nest box. Um, yeah, so that's typically, you know, they go in there to eat. Um, they go inside there to train with us. Um, so yeah, they, um, you can't see it, but there is a little cave and a little tunnel that goes back into their holding. We call it a holding, but um, it's, it's basically their house. And why is it divided into the two? We obviously have a male and a female um, on either side. And um, although they do go together briefly uh, for breeding, um, the rest of the time they're separated, often because she has a cub with her. Um, you know, there, there's always the possibility that the male could get, you know, aggressive towards the cub or dangerous towards the cub. So we always, you know, take that into account. So we keep them separated. Um, but um, when we do put them together for breeding, um, it's, it's sort of a short period of time. We don't leave them together um, just for the safety of both animals. Sure. Um, and these are endangered animals, so yes. every new addition oh, is very important. Extremely, extremely, very and much so. And we want to so. do everything we can to help bolster that population. Completely, yep, 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 yep. yep. And Corey's four-year-old wants to know, what do they eat? <laughs> oh gosh, well, so they're carnivores, meaning that the bulk, well, these guys are obligate carnivores, which means they only eat meat. Um, that's the most important part of their diet. Um, other carnivores can eat mostly meat and some other things, but these guys are strict meat eaters. 
So we give them um, at the zoo a special kind of feline diet. We try our best to mimic what they'd be getting in the wild. So the meat we give them happens to be horse meat. Sorry for everybody who uh, has horses. Um, that meat is very lean. Mm -hmm. It could mimic a mountain goat, um, a wild sheep that they'd see in the wild. Um, it's just a very um, nutritious diet that's also lean, high in protein, and has good uh, you know, fragments of sinew and whatnot. Uh, it, we mimic as best we can what they'd get in the wild. As treats, they get whole bunny rabbits. Um, we, we spoil them, so we skin a little bit of fur off for them because, you know, we, we can. And those are humanely euthanized Absolutely. bunny rabbits? Yes, they, they do not come to us alive, unfortunately, but uh, we are assured that they were, yes, humanely euthanized. Um, uh, they also, as, I'm oh, sorry. sorry. No, please continue, sorry. As, as she said, you know, we, wa we want to tell you guys as much as we possibly can and as be as honest and transparent mm -hmm. as we can with you. So we understand that, you know, this raises some questions, but it's also trying to be as close to their wild diet as they can and to promote those natural behaviors exactly. so that our animals stay animals. So that's mm -hmm. one thing that we're across the zoo is that we're always trying to do. So a absolutely. That's, that's very true. Um, we do our best to mimic the diet and um, like you said, the species e um, evolved to eat a certain thing and we try our darndest to um, fulfill their nutritional needs appropriately. And Jeremiah wants to know how long the tail is. <laughs> well, that can depend on the cat. Um, so I, I guess I can't give you an exact answer. Um, the tail can be just as long, if not a little longer than the body length from nose to um, to uh, but <laughs> sorry, yeah. um, uh, but the tail is um, extra long in these cats. That tail is super important for balance. These cats live um, in the wild in cold, rocky mountains. So you can imagine you have to have fabulous balance if you're going to be jumping from rock to rock to rock yeah. without falling. So that long tail gives them a sense of balance when they do that. It also allows them to change directions when they're leaping or running. It's a really neat um, adaptation, but the tail, that's a great question. The tail is super important to these guys and it's really, really, really long. And they use it too to wrap around themselves, right? Exactly. So yeah, when you see a, a snow leopard who, uh, who is cold, they're probably in a very, very frigid environment. So they curl up into a little ball and they um, will wrap their tail around their nose um, that holds in the warm air that they're exhaling that kind of creates a warm space uh, in fact huskies do that yeah uh, um, up in Alaska but yeah that that kind of it's like a little muff and Luke wants to know what is their favorite food <laughs> so um, on special days um, they get bones uh, they are usually beef bones they're very large beef bones and I'll tell you when they see those bones come in they get excited uh, yeah, Bone Day. Bone Day is a very fantastic day in the cat Bone area. Day, it's, all right. That is like by far their favorite. And yes, Zach, Dorigo was Greta's other cub. That's right. And mm -hmm. she has moved on to... Bronx, uh, I believe. I believe it's the Bronx Zoo. Yes. And she is on exhibit there and hopefully down the road she'll be breeding mm -hmm. and helping out the population too. From what we hear from the other keepers, she's doing very well. Wonderful. Yeah. We love to hear that. Yes, we do. And speaking of hearing, <laughs> can you guys hear that noise? Oh, of course. Now that we're going to talk about it. Oh. <laughs> what you're hearing in the background would be Titan, our, um, um, our tiger. Yes, Amor Tiger. Our male Amor Tiger. There we go. Yep. <laughs> Stumbling on my words. No, it's okay. They used to be called Siberian Tigers. Now yeah. they're... Now we've made the name harder. <laughs> and he is, he is in the exhibit behind these guys. And as uh, Margaret was telling us earlier, he's kind of a nosy dude. <laughs> so he's wondering what we're doing over here. I'm sure he'll make an appearance on one of these sometime soon. And right now we've got two sleepy kitties over here. <laughs> Everybody's just hanging out in their little nest box. Yep, with their cute little cat toes. Yes. Which are also adaptations. 
They're like snowshoes. They're wide and they keep the their uh they keep the cat above the snow so they don't fall in the snow and they're adorable. So that's another <laughs> a perk for the keeper. Absolutely. And McKinley wants to know how do they handle the summer heat here? Oh gosh. Like divas. <laughs> um <laughs> Like I said, in their little house in there, they have air conditioning. So um, oftentimes in the summer, not often, it, it, in, in the summer when uh, it gets very, very warm and it could be a, you know, a hazard to the animal or we can see that they're clearly uncomfortable, we'll give them access inside their holding area so that they can choose to come in and out. Um, oftentimes when they see that door open, they're like, bye. <laughs> and they're in their air conditioning. So. Um, they um they don't like the heat and what we consider to be heat is very different from what they consider to be heat the sure. spring weather is becoming heat for them you know they're getting a little bit slow they're getting to be like zombie snow leopards <laughs> at this point but uh yeah once it gets warmer you can tell their activity is quite quite a bit down they sleep a lot come winter you see them perked up you see them jumping around so there's a marked difference but yeah, they don't like the hot weather. And we try to keep them cool Absolutely. as we do a lot of our animals. We give them ice treats. Absolutely. Um, and they, you know, they seem to enjoy those too. They, yes, they do. And, um, you know, water is always available. We give a mister, um, a mister on a hose that they can choose to walk through if they, if they want. Very cool. But yeah. And Brogan and Mackenzie would like to know if they ever fight. <laughs> um, so in this um, situation, sometimes it'll be mama chastising baby for doing something silly. Um, Greta's a great mom. She's super patient. She had Dari or Dariga um, up till she was about two um, and they coexisted quite well. Two um, fe adult, almost adult females and they coexisted really, really well. So the only thing we see is a, a boop on the nose for being a naughty kitten really. Okay. But in the wild, they could fight. Probably a male, a male and another male. Um, Crossing territory. Exactly. And it could get pretty, pretty rough. And Avery wants to know why they have spots. Um, so that's a fabulous question. Um, a lot of times leopards have spots, leopards in general have spots um, because it helps them blend into their environment. Um, the spots can be, you know, s somewhat confusing. Um, um, which helps them, you know, hide and, you know, when they're stalking prey and whatnot. So the spots can help them blend in. Uh, the lighter color of the snow leopard versus your African leopard um, is because, you know, they're blending into s snow sure. essentially and a lighter colored terrain. Yep. Um, spots can be like a fingerprint. No set of spots are the same. Although it's funny because it, uh, Babs shares some spot patterns with her mom and some spot patterns with her dad, which is really fun. That is cool. Um, but in general, that set of spots is like her fingerprint, her calling card. And um, also the certain spots and the stripes on the tail help the baby to follow the mom um, when they're walking out in the wild. Um, that tail serves as kind of like a little sign, like, hey, follow me. Very cool. Mm -hmm. And Evie and Ella, she has said that the favorite food of snow leopards is when they get bones, mm -hmm. specifically beef bones, and they really enjoy those. Yes, they do. Um, they're like toothbrushes for them. Well, they're, yeah. Mm -hmm. Annie, we are saving our live videos. They are all being archived on our YouTube channel, so go check those out, and you can always scroll back on our timeline, and they'll stay up there for quite a while, too. Um, Anna, we are so glad that you tuned in here on your birthday to see oh. one of your favorite animals. Happy birthday Happy to birthday. Anna. And Emma, age six, asks, can they hang from their tails? <laughs> um, unfortunately, they can't. That'd be really cool. I'm envisioning a snow leopard doing that and I'm laughing. Um, no, so their tails are not prehensile. Um, a lot of animals have prehensile tails, meaning that the tail can almost serve as another appendage to um, you know, hang from, you know, what have you, a tree. These guys don't have that um, feature. But you said theirs is more like a rudder exactly. to help them change directions and keep their balance. Exactly. But they do have a fabulous set of claws that helps them climb. Yes, they do. So <laughs> no hanging, but uh, yeah. They are expert climbers, oh, too. Oh, they're fabulous. 
oh gosh, you should, <laughs> they get some, they get up to some pretty, uh, uh, terrifying heights that scare the keepers, but they're, you know, they're fine. They're like, no, no, we got this. And they the keepers it. are kind of like, you know, like, oh my God, <laughs> but yeah. And yeah. Quinn would like to know how fast they can run. Oh, see, I don't know a specific on that one. Um, that's a fabulous question. It might um, be something worth Googling. It would be something worth Googling. I'm trying to guesstimate. I don't want to say, uh, you know, the wrong number. My assumption would be somewhere uh, a top speed of 20-ish miles per hour. Uh, that's a guess. <laughs> like I said, Google that, please. Um, but, uh, you know, if they're chasing fast prey like a rabbit, a, a mountain goat, a, a mountain sh a sheep, um, you got to be fast. And like I said, when you're... Uh, Hitting those fast speeds, a tail that serves as a sort of a rudder to change your direction when you're hitting those speeds is really important. Very important. Yeah. But great question. <laughs> I'm sorry I couldn't answer that. That's okay. I mean, you guys are at home right now. That'd be a good thing to have mom and dad help you Google. Mm -hmm. They're fast. How about that? There you go. <laughs> Paige wants to know where snow leopards usually live. Paige, we're going to answer this one in two different ways. So our snow leopards here at the zoo are between Tiger Terrace and Tembo Trail. Um, they are close to where our hippo head statue is and kind of between the carnivore cafe and going back towards elephants, just to give you an idea of where we are here at the zoo. But in the wild, they um, are native to the Himalaya mountains. Correct. And really cold regions of- Right of Russia and kind of the Far East. There. Yeah, so they say kind of as an all-encompassing term, Central Asia, but that can go as far as Afghanistan. Um, and then, like you said, into um, parts of Russia, for sure. Um, Kyrgyzstan is another uh, mm -hmm. important country that has uh, a population of snow leopards. Um, yeah, Nepal, like you said, the Himalayas. Very cool. Yeah. And Ariel, they are separated um, because right now we have a She's a baby still. She's yeah. not oh, quite yeah. one yet. Yeah, so she's a baby. She's a baby still. Babs. And we just want to give all of the um, baby snow leopards the absolute best chance of, you know, hanging with mom and learning from mom and growing up to, you know, help bolster the population. And sometimes male and female snow leopards can, uh, or males can be a little aggressive, wanting to breed again. Um, and seeing the cub is kind of a threat to that. So we want to make sure that doesn't happen. So we have them where they can see each other. And as, as Margaret was telling us, uh, Greta is definitely interested in the handsome Shashir over there. Yes. And Babs does acknowledge her dad and he acknowledges her back. And it's, it's a really fun little interaction to watch. She's very curious about him. So that's awesome. Yeah. Through the mesh, it's a very, it's a pleasant dynamic. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. And Cindy asks, does their tail fur rub off dragging on the ground? Um, so it doesn't typically drag on the ground. Um, cats will typically, um, sit, okay, well, nah, I'm, I'm, she's making me a liar. <laughs> <laughs> so the answer to that question is no. Um, they don't rub on the ground enough um, to have that happen. Now, they do shed. Um, come, come the warmer weather, all oh, that coat just falls right off. They blow their coat, um, quite a bit. Um, so that tail, uh, is more often held up in sort of an upright position. They use their tails to communicate their, their moods and whatnot. So, um, <laughs> and as you, as you guys could see, as she was walking, it was just lightly touching the ground. Right. So. And you know, in the wild, it would maybe be rubbing across the snow. Um, we've never seen the, you know, that fur rub off. That's an excellent question. That can happen. Uh, but not, not that we've ever seen in snow leopards. Um, but I can assure you that coat comes off in the summer and the keepers have to deal with the I bet. <laughs> and that's drains. an awful lot of fur, huh? Mm -hmm. And yeah. Samara asks, are they more active now that the zoo doesn't have visitors or do <laughs> they like seeing the people? Um, they are. Um, they're they're used to people for sure you know and they you know they kind of acknowledge with a look and then go back to their cat business but um they do like the peace and quiet 
And they are also known as ghost cats <laughs> in the wild because they're not usually seen no. by humans, right? No, absolutely not. Um, very uh, elusive animal. Yeah, you, you, you're not likely to see one if you're, <laughs> you're out there walking and you might not be in a good way if you come across one. <laughs> no, no. Luke wants to know, do they have any toys? Oh, yes. Yes. Um, well, see that spool toy, that black plastic toy in the tree? Mm -hmm. That's one of them. Um, there's a little dried gourd in there. That's uh, another toy they like to bat around. Um, they have all sorts of balls, um, fun little objects um, that are durable plastic because they like to chew. Uh, most of their toys have chew marks in them, but yes, they absolutely do. And they play just like your domestic cat. They bat the ball around. Very cool. Yeah. And Alex asks, how many snow leopards do we have here at the zoo? We have three. And currently. Yep. And we're showing you guys, we're going to try and show you all three. So who's up on the, on the rock there for us? Miss Greta. Miss Greta on the rock. We've got Babs over here playing with, it looks like a lid <laughs> some, or a frisbee or something oh, oh, there. So yeah, that lid has um, <laughs> beef um, powder, a bouillon mm -hmm. powder and, with mustard on it. Ah, so and she <laughs> she's having a snack. Yeah, the uh, mustard was for more for a scent enrichment. The beef was more for a um, a taste enrichment. But apparently she likes that mustard, which yeah. is kind of cool. That is cool. And Mr. Shashir is still over here in his nest box snoozing away. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and he will be for hours. <laughs> yes. And yes, Stephanie, that is Titan in the background trying oh, yeah. to steal the spotlight again. Mm -hmm. Yep. I, I guess we're definitely going to have to uh, put him on camera here coming up, huh, guys? Yeah, he's a ham. He is. He is. And let's see here. Um, let's give a few shout outs while we're um, in between questions here because we're still getting a lot of highs. So, hi, Zach. Hi, Kimmy. Hi, Alex. Hey to McKinley and Logan. Hi, Amber. Thanks for tuning in. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Brendan and Kate, Christopher and Tara. Oh, Tara says say hi to the cameraman. Uh, hi, cameraman. <laughs> uh, hi, Rod. Thanks for tuning in. And Sarah, we just tried to give you a little hint here. Uh, Mom is up on the rocks and the baby is the one playing with the lid over there. So thank you, Cindy, for saying that you're enjoying these. We're having fun doing these with you guys um let's see here thanks for tuning in everybody we really enjoy doing these and we hope that you're learning some really cool things uh, about all of our animals memphis age four wants to know where are these snow leopards from so kind of um central asia yep. um a climate that's usually chilly um, and can go into um, Afghanistan area. So a prim primarily Central Asia, but it, it kind of spans out um, to Russia. Um, yeah, but since the population's kind of sparse, um, you know, that range is probably a little lower, but um, we're trying our best to help conserve the species. But um, that's the general region, Himalayas, Nepal. And, yep. And Kelly, they do live on mountains. And mm -hmm. Margaret was talking about all of their adaptations that help them survive up there. So let's, let's give a quick recap here. We said they have really dense fur coats to help keep them warm. Their long tail that they can wrap around them. They have really sharp claws <laughs> to help them walk on icy and rocky terrain. Yep. And they kind of flatten out like snowshoes. Yep. And you said their feet are very wide. Mm -hmm. And there's even fur on the bottom of their yeah. feet, right? Yeah, between the pads. Yeah. And um, the spots obviously help them blend in. Mm -hmm. So all of those are adaptations for help, helping them live in the Himalaya mountains in really cold regions. So, yep, Zach, that is the tiger you hear <laughs> in the background for so sure. It's funny, Greta and Titan um, have a little, like, a little relationship we call it they, <laughs> they like to watch each other communicate with each other it's actually kind of funny a little soap opera <laughs> that is very cool yeah hey athena and kaden hi bryn thanks for tuning in hi alessandra 
Hey Liz, thanks for tuning in. Hi Colt, and he's excited to see these animals. Well, mm -hmm. we're excited to show them to you. And Christopher wants to know if any of the animals are behaving differently since there aren't as many people around. <laughs> yeah, especially the cats. <laughs> cats, you know, cats like their privacy. For sure. Um, yeah, I mean, they're just more active. Um, and these temperatures help these temperatures too. They're help kind of in between for all of our cats. You know, nothing too cold or too hot. These are these are good these times are to come to the zoo. Yeah, so. in the fall as well. That's just peak time when the snow leopards start perking up again. Absolutely. But yeah, you can tell they they like it. And Mason wants to know if any of our snow leopards will ever be released back into the wild. Not that I am aware of. Now, that's that's actually a question for our, our director and our curator and um, the SSP, which is the Species Survival um, Program. Um, our, our animals are um, used to a life in captivity, so probably wouldn't be safe to send them back out. Like, but like you said, we try to keep things as natural as possible so they retain a lot of those behaviors, instincts, and whatnot. That being said, though, you know, they're used to this life. And we do support snow leopard conservation Correct. happening with Panthera, who are studying animals in the wild, but our animals here at the zoo serve as ambassadors Correct. for their wild counterparts. And that's why we want you guys to be able to see them, to know them, and to love them, because you then care about what you know and what you love. So that's part of why we do what we do here at the zoo and also part of why we are doing this, these live feeds to show you guys all of this. Right, and, and we can learn about an animal that you don't typically see in the wild by watching them here. So that gives us a lot of information on how to keep them healthy. Absolutely, yes. And Weston would like to know what kind of education does a person <laughs> who works with the snow leopards need? <laughs> well, um, actually, a lot of the keepers have different degrees that aren't really animal related. Some psychology, um, business and what have you. Um, so a lot of us have biology degrees, mm -hmm. zoology. Sure. Um, there's no specific degree, um, but uh, uh, interest in animals certainly helps and uh, experience at zoo is a big thing that's important to have. Um, but, but going back to the psychology uh, majors, um, we train with our animals here um, and we have to understand behavior um, and whatnot. So a lot of the um, people who specialize in psychology and um, behavior have a really easy time training the animals. Um, it, a little it's kinda, better understanding. Exactly. So it's, um, it's kind of neat to see that correlation, but no specific degree. Very cool. Yeah. All right, guys, Serenity says hi. Hi, Serenity. And yes, these cats are so pretty. Um, and thank you, Patricia, for being a zoo pal for these guys. That is one great way you guys can support our animals during this difficult time, but all the time, is by becoming a zoo pal or a proud animal lover. And basically, you're sponsoring or um, kind of symbolically adopting an animal here at the zoo and your donation goes specifically to their care and enrichment. All of our animals are available for zoo pal adoptions and you can find out more information about that at toledozoo.org slash zoo pal. Thank you, uh, Patricia, for being a zoo pal and also for setting us up to talk a little bit about that. We appreciate that very much. Um, at this point, we are going to give you guys a couple more moments to check out these beautiful creatures. We'll end with some reminders and a few more shout outs, and then we will be off for the weekend. But don't forget to tune in to our story times and craft times that will be posted this weekend. Hope we have some more things that you guys will enjoy to keep you busy. Again, remember, we're still doing meals on the go. We're still doing all those virtual classrooms. Check it all out on our homepage at ToledoZoo.org. And we will see you guys again soon. We're going to sign off. We'll say bye, Lisa. Bye, Ben. Bye, Linda. Bye, Noah. Bye, Haley. Thank you guys for joining us. And thank you, Margaret, for telling us all about these cool creatures. My pleasure. <laughs>